2023. We're here at Irwindale Speedway, day one of the Power Tour, and it's already kind of cool. I'm very excited. I've never done anything like this. I'm doing the long haul. I'm going from Irwindale, Vegas, then back to Pomona. I might run the LT. I don't know. It's bone stock. I don't know what it's going to be, but it looks good. Let me show it to you. Oh, she's looking good, ain't she? All tucked away next to that Camaro and that white Elantra. But look at all these cars already. It's about nine o'clock and there is already a ton of cars. But right now I need to head over to, I don't know where, and pick up my credentials. I guess I get a goodie bag and a bunch of stickers or ah. By the way, the El Camino is running amazing. And I think, I keep saying this, but I'm pretty sure the fuel economy is, I mean, fuel economy is doing good for, for a V8 of the 80s. Filled it up this morning, came all the way here. It didn't, the gas gauge barely moved, so that's a good sign. Let me head over there, pick up my credentials, put my stickers on. All checked in. Didn't take very long. Not that many cars doing the long haul, which is what I'm doing. All right, there's a lot of cars prepping in the parking lot to race. That's, that's what's cool about these events. That it's not just a car show. They're actually going to run some of these cars down the track. And when do you get the opportunity to run any of these tracks? Irwindale, there's always tests and tunes. But at Pomona, you'll never run at Pomona unless they have something like this or the or the, the in and out drag shows. See, these guys are prepping to run their cars. So they drove it here. Now they're going to do a quick tire change, put some slicks on it, get a little sticky. And run it down the track. It's like a Pontiac. I forget what these are called. This truck's a little deceiving. Doesn't look like it's modified at all. But then you look under the hood and it's got this supercharger in there. has a nitrous kit. Supercharged Mustang. Bunch of Ford racing parts on them. The Dodge Ram. Oh, with a Viper motor in it. Check that out. Some V10 goodness for you. Fox body SVO Mustang is running an EcoBoost motor. It's a modern four cylinder. I think these might be turbo, but no, I don't see a turbo on this one. Oh no, it is turbo. Yep, it's a turbocharged four cylinder. These are coming out of like a Focus or a Fusion. These SVO Mustangs from the 80s, because this is probably like an 83, 84. They came with a turbocharged four cylinder. But you know, ancient technology. This is all new stuff, all new technology. This isn't your typical Nova. Very heavily modified Nova. Interior is really nice, really clean. Got a roll cage in it. It's got those racing wheels, so I'm pretty sure this thing's very fast. Obviously, it's got a supercharged small block Chevy in it. I hope they run this thing. It'd be nice to see this thing go down the track, see how fast it actually is.
little Nova wagon right here. Shows it has a V6 engine. Guarantee you it doesn't. So it's really nice wheels back there, nice and wide. Here's another one I hope they put on the track. Let's check out the 70s Malibu. <laughs> Supercharged, big block. Really nice car. But man, I want to see these run on the drag strip. They all look good sitting. I want to see how they look running. This is this was in a hot rod magazine. They actually took this Nova and put all these parts on it. There it is right there. 10 seconds for under 8500 bucks. I think I have this magazine. It was just a small block with aluminum heads, high-rise manifold. It was good reading back in the days. This Camaro right here looks to be a build that Hot Rod Magazine did back in the 80s. If you look at a lot of the parts, the paint job, uh, they're very period correct for 1980-ish, early 90s. Paint job is definitely from the 80s. Krager wheels, definitely from the 80s. That louvered rear window shade in the back, it's all from the 80s. This looks to be like a, another budget build that the magazine did to show you that you can modify with very little money to make a cool car, you know. They probably took it to Earl Shive and got it painted for 100 bucks. If you look at the inside of the car, the only aftermarket parts you see are those gauges, that shifter, the interior is tweed, the speaker tray is tuck and roll, has T-tops. As you can see, it's, it's been through the power tour a couple times. This is a nice example of some of the stuff that Hot Rod used to do in the 80s to show you that it doesn't take much to make a car look cool. Oh, Project X, Hot Rod's test car. This 57 Chevy has been through the ring. Hot Rod uses this car to test parts, to, to test different combinations of parts, different drivetrains, different engines, different wheels, different brakes. This car has been through it all. Right now it's running this big huge crate engine, 632 cubic inch. It's got a lot of fancy parts on there. I'm sure those are very expensive parts. In its current configuration, it's a gas powered car. Hot Rod actually took this vehicle and made it an electric car to show that you can put electric drive components in a classic car and I guess still make it look cool. I like <laughs> I like gas motors, but it did it, it was a cool idea to put electric drive in it. The interior is pretty much stock with some aftermarket components here and there. If you're a fan of Lucky's Garage, oh, you're in for a treat. He brought two of his cars to show off at this show. Both cars were built on his YouTube channel. You can go ahead and check out the videos and see exactly what he did to both of them. What I really like about this Chevelle is the way everything fits. He's got a Terminator dash. I think this thing is running a sequential transmission, but if you look inside, the roll cage, the seats, uh, everything seems to fit perfect. I, I'm, I don't want to call it perfect, but it's pretty close to perfect. On the outside, that red primer looks good against those torque thrust wheels. If, if we look under the hood, all the lines, all the wiring, all the belts, that big supercharged LS motor. Everything is functional. It has AC. The whole suspension has been upgraded. The chassis has been stiffened. This car looks like it would run great on and off the track. Almost looks like a factory built this or like a, you know, a team of engineers <laughs> built it. This is just a really well thought out, really well put together build. The truck is built just as nice as a Chevelle. If you look at the wheels, look at the stands, still running an LS engine, just a different configuration. All the lines, it just all looks good. Running AC, I don't know what trans it has. I think this one has a sequential trans as well. All the modifications don't like slap you in the face, but it's very heavily modified. And again, it probably runs awesome on and off the track. The interior hasn't been modified very much. It's just a good looking C10.
all the really nice cars in the back. Oh man, I think we got a sword for a parking brake. Yeah, this is all nicely done. Blacked out emblems, shaved door handles, supercharged LS motors. Yeah, this is all really nice. This one's not too shabby either. Twin Turbo Nova. Paint job's in really good shape too. Oh, first time I ever seen a see-through hood. Check out that sticker. I don't know if you can read it. Haters gonna hate. So I'm gonna hate on this car. Actually, it's kind of nice. It's a Toyota. Little Toyota race car with some funky wings. We don't want to rear in this car. Look at this 67 Mustang. 67? Yep, 67 Mustang. Like a road race car. Very minimalistic interior, no back seat. Roll cage, nice little cowl induction hood, those rally wheels, it's a nice Mustang. Oh, look at the Chevelle. Now, believe it or not, people, that is an LS engine disguised to look like a small block Ford engine. Like most of the work was done on the engine on this car. Looks pretty original, except for the wheels, of course, and the suspension, and the engine, and the brakes. But all in all, pretty stock, right? <laughs> Interior looks to be stock. Still got the bench seat in it. Probably runs really nice, really, really good on the street and really good on the track. This truck is very deceiving because it looks like a stock square body OBS. But if you start looking closely, it's got a like a, a frame connector. The engine's been pushed back into the truck. I don't know, maybe five, six inches, seven inches, who knows? Interior obviously isn't stock. You can see it's an LSX engine. Look at all this space you have right here. This engine was pushed way back for racing purposes, like Autobahn stuff. It looks like they're already racing, so I'm gonna make my way down to the grandstand, check out some of these cars going down the track, and uh, just have a good time. <laughs> Power Tour Day 1. What are my thoughts? Well, all in all, it's a great show, but I would recommend if you're gonna do a Hot Rod Power Tour, bring a cooler, something to drink, and some snacks, unless you wanna spend $40 on a, a burrito <laughs> and some water. And bring somebody with you. I came by myself just to check it out because I've never been out here. Well, this is the first time they've done it in a long time here. 
I've seen the first time they've done it in the West in maybe 10, 20 years. Actually, I really don't know, but it's been a long time. But I'm having fun, but I'm a little bored and a little tired and a little sunburned. So I'll leave it right here and I'll catch you on day two in Las Vegas tomorrow morning. I'll see you there.